Okay, good afternoon. Let's get started. Uh, today we will have a look of lab seven and as well as our projects. I will give you a little bit, a little hint about how to start our project and how to do the data collection. And let's have a look of the lab seven at first. So in this week, we have already learned how to, uh, how the cellular network uh, working. And in this lab, we just will practice how to draw a cellular network to make sure you, you are fully understanding how this thing is, how this thing work. Uh, the task is pretty simple. For the first one we need to do is do a report to draw a zero network like this. And let's have a look of the, this stuff. Uh, maybe before we do the task, maybe have a look of here. Uh, this one is a slice from the lecture notes. So all we need to do is focus on the equation here. Can, can you see that? And this one. Uh, after you understand this equation, then we can uh, calculate what is the n and i and j. Maybe I can open it. Let me open the slides at first. Yeah, in the page 13, this one is the most important thing. Uh, make sure you understand this equation. And if you don't know what is this, don't worry, let's have a look of this example. So basically, we, if we know n, then we can calculate what is the i and j. Or if we know i or j and j, then we can calculate what is n. And that's the way how we draw the graph. You can see, uh, move i cells in any direction, and then turn 60 degree counterclocks and move j cells. Then we can find the next spot for the A. Does this make sense? So make sure you have already understand this example here. Then we can start to do the task. Uh, so the basic idea is figure out what is the N and then calculate the I and J. Then you can start to draw your map. For this one, the cluster size equal to nine, which means n equal to nine. Okay. And then we can calculate what is the i and j. So you may consider how, how to calculate that. Um, I think we can use a script to help us to calculate it. And run the Python, you can uh, define a function that can help you to calculate this. For i in, let's say, uh, 10, for j in range 10, uh, and if, the what is the equation? n equals to this one plus j plus i over j, and we can print the result. Okay. So when the n is equal to nine, then we can calculate 
the i and j is equal to zero or three. And in the second case, this one is 12, which means two and two, okay? So it's pretty easy to calculate that. Or you can just calculate by, your, uh, by with your pen. And then you can start to draw this. If you don't, if you don't know how to draw it, just have a look of this page, then you will know it. And for the third one, we need to show the cluster. So let me see. So you need to draw the border outside of the cluster with different color. And that's all. Do you have any question related to this task one? Uh, so we just made three ta maps for task one. Uh, basically, yes. So all you need to do is tell us what is N and what is I and J, and then draw the maps. So for the task one, it just show the value of them and draw the maps. So this one is pretty easy if you can understand the slides. Let's go to the next one, task two. Uh, so this one is pretty, it's still pretty easy. Just follow the steps. Uh, I will show you the key steps here. So in the second step, we are using the mobile phone to evaluate the SRP value. I can show you. show you like this. You can use your mobile phone and call this number. Okay. And you can see there is a dashboard that you can find the RSRP value. Can you see my screen? Yeah. So that's the way how we enter the uh, screen. And if you are using an Android phone or other phones, you can search online how to enter this mode. Okay, so if you know how to enter this mode with your mobile phone, then you can easily find the RSRP value here, right? Here. here. All you need to do is select three different spots in your home and with two different highs in the same spot, which means you need to get at least six value for the task two. And then you can draw a heat map, maybe a simple map. The heat map is pretty good, but if you can't, you can just draw a simple maps of your home and tell us what, it, what is the difference. And then you also can, you can also show a Excel table that contain all the values that you captured. And that's all.
for task two, what does it mean? No further than one minute apart. Do you mean this? Okay. So which means, uh, because we need to select three different spots in our home, right? Three different spots in our home. Uh, for example, I can show you on the screen. For example, my home is like this. So I select three different spots. Maybe th this one is the first one. This one is the second one. This one is the third one. So for these three spots, I also need to select two different heights. For example, I for this spot, I put it on the ground at first, and then maybe I can put a chair or put a table on it, and then uh, put my mobile phone on the chair or on the table, then calculate the ISSI again. So it doesn't mean this, the distance between these spots is less than one minute. It, it can be like two meters. It can be three meters. It doesn't really matter. But uh, maybe because you may have some trouble to put on the ground or put on the table for these spots. So you can also put it on here if there is a table. And we need to make sure the distance between these two spots are less than one minute, uh, one meter. Yeah, because we need to uh, measure the RSRP value in the different heights. So we want you to keep in the same spots when you measure this. Um, yes. And if you, you can also add a paragraph of, of your observation in task two, they will be excellent. And that's all. The lab seven is pretty easy. Do you have any question related to the labs? Okay, if we, if we don't, then we can enter the project. Let's talk about the project. So the first step of our project maybe is the data collection. So I think everyone should collect some data for our project. So you may have some trouble while capturing. Uh, some students may find they cannot capture a lot of packets per second. For example, they can only capture uh, like, um, like three or five packets per second with the ISSI, which is not really enough. So we think if we can get at least 50 packets per second, that will be good for our project. So is there a way to increase the packets that we can capture every second? So the first, first method is pretty easy. Just play an online video while capturing. Uh, for the capturing, we, we can use the Wireshark if you are using the Mac OS or Linux. And if you are using the Windows 10, then you need to install the network monitor to capture the packets. So because I'm using the Windows 10, so I will use this one to do the demonstration. Only select the Wi-Fi here and make sure your 
computer does not connect to any other internet, such as the cable internet. And make sure you only connect to the hotspot from your mobile phone. And you can put your mobile phone like one meters or two meters, three meters away from your computer. And you should be in the middle of them. And then you can stop capturing. Uh, maybe before this, before we start, we can run, like open the YouTube or uh, play some video if you have enough data. But if you don't have enough data for your mobile phone, mobile plan, then you can uh, use the ping command. And uh, I think we can also like, instead of play a video, we can also create a meeting, online meeting. For example, you can open a meeting on Zoom. So which make, makes you always send the, re, send the video or images into the server of Zoom. So it will also increase the traffic between your device and the hotspot. But there's lots of way to increase the traffic. Just use them and try. And in here, I will show you how to do the ping command to run the terminal here, run the CMD. The ping command is in this format. You can use ping help to have a look of the format. But basically the ping can use the interval. You can set as 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or something like that. If you are using the Linux or Mac OS, but in Windows 10, we are only need, allowed to set the interval as one. So the minimum value of the interval is one second per packet. And the packet number n, we can set it as a very large number, let's say uh, 5,000. And then, no, there's com. And the address, uh, for the IP address, you need to figure out what is your IP address and what is the hotspot's IP address. So in my here is this one. So it will start to send a packet every second. So it will increase one packet per second in the Wireshark, maybe two packets because it will send to the server and the server will, will return one. So that, that's two packets, but that is not enough because we want to have like 50 or more than 50 packets per second that have RSS value. So we can like use a Python script or use the PowerShell to run the scripts that I have already shared the scripts on the forum, so you can run it. But in here, I just only show how to do the basic ping command here. So let's say how to figure out what is the IP address of your hotspot. You can use the IP config commands here to find out what is your default gateway here. Uh, for this one is your IPv4 address. This one is your IP address. And this one is your hotspot address. So make sure you are ping this address instead of ping yourself, okay? Uh, if you are using the Mac OS or Linux, you can use the IF config. Uh, I can show you here. Okay. 
visualize a Linux machine, Raspberry Pi, you can use the uh, IF config to figure out what is your address and network mask and what is your broadcast. I think, yes, that's all for the pink man. It's pretty easy. So what you need to do is there are lots of ways to increase the traffic between your devices. So you can use them if you want. And when you run the pink man in your computer, then you can stop the capturing, new capture and F5 to start. And then you can perform some gesture during this time. And maybe you can make some notes if needed. Like I, I'm doing the gesture from 12 seconds to 15 seconds. And then I stop it. And then we can see what is the shape of the ISSI. Uh, and save the cap file like this. Let me open this and then open it with Wireshark. You can see there are some uh, signal strings that are here. You can see there are some pink command. I'm sending some ping commands from my uh, ping packets from my computer to the hotspot. Then you can see it does increase the traffic and bring me more packets every second. Or you can also uh, do the uh, like video playing or streaming or other stuff to increase your traffic. For example, here, uh, you can see the address of this is Zoom's IP address because I'm using the Zoom to streaming my, uh, desk, uh, my desktop. And you can see for every second, I have lots of packets. I have 358 packets. So I guess they are about at least 80 packets per second that have signal strength. Do the packets capture have be evenly spaced? Uh, it doesn't need it to be evenly spaced, but if you can make it evenly spaced, that will be maybe much easier to help you to identify the gesture. If you have some way to like send the packets in a fixed speed, that would be excellent. Yes, that, that should be a way to improve your performance. But it is not necessary. So maybe you have you have you still have an, no idea how to do the project, how to start the project. Because we need to design some gesture and then collect the data and like design an algorithm or use the machine learning model to uh, like do the classification. So if you have no idea how to do it, then you can search some paper online. I think Mahab have already introduced some research and paper to you, right? Then you can read it if you have no idea how to do it. And you can also search on the GitHub for the tools that can help you. And the last one is the machine learning. 
uh, you can do the machine learning if you want, but this one is not necessary. So all we need to do is design an algorithm or use a method to do the classification, but the, the, the only thing we want is the high performance. So if you have a way to make it very, have very high accuracy or performance, then it doesn't really matter you use machine learning or not. So don't worry if you have no idea how to do the machine learning. It's not a necessary stuff. If you use the machine learning, it will not help you to get more marks. If you didn't use the machine learning, you will, you will not lose any marks. But if you want to use the machine learning, uh, there are lots of uh, useful libraries that you can use. For example, this one. You can use the scikit-learn at Python. You can see the, maybe we should use the supervised learning. This one is very easy. There are a lot of different kind of supervised machine learning. Uh, the decision tree is pretty easy, very easy to understand. And the, mm, yeah, KNN is also a good one. And then you can see there are some example how to run this library, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is just follow the codes here if you want to use the machine learning stuff. Uh, prepare your data set, and then put the data set inside of the library and use it to train your model and then return the result to use the model to predict. It will save you a lot of time. But, uh, the key thing is we want you to have a very good performance on the classification, no matter uh, what kind of algorithm or what kind of library you used. So if you can use machine learning, I think you can probably get a good performance. Uh, what does your raw data look like? So that's the key thing. You can prepare your raw, raw data like this. You can export it, export the useful data. Uh, maybe I can open one. I can show you an example. So when you get the, uh, let's say the RSS data, over the times, that's all you need. So this one is the raw data. It's just an example here. In here, I wave my hand in this data set, but you can see there are only uh, five packets per second, which is not enough, but it's just an example here. You can see here, uh, then we can start to extract the feature from it. And how to ex extract the features that you can search by yourself. There are lots of ways to extract the different kind of feature from this kind of 2D array. Uh, for the simplest one, I just plot the graph like this. 
uh, in this graph, I wave my hand for three times, but it's really hard to tell when I wave my hand in this graph, right? So you need to find a way to figure out. But you can see uh, with the different gesture, they have different kind of pattern. So what I suggest is just design a very basic and simple method at first, and then start to improve it. Maybe at first, maybe I can distinguish by uh, with my eyes or uh, with the Excel by plotting this kind of graph, and I, I can figure out what is my problem. Maybe for this one is I have a few packets per, sec per second, so I need to improve it. And I cannot, I can hardly tell you when I perform the gesture in this graph. So maybe I need to find a way to improve it. Maybe you can change the way you plot the graph or you can uh, use a timer to make some notes or something that, you, that can help you to improve the performance, okay? So then you can write all this stuff into your report and tell us how you improve your uh, model or method. Uh, what does your raw data look like? My very strange noise. Yes. It doesn't really change a lot, I think. You can see it's from minus 30 to minus 35, 30, 40. Yes. This one, yeah. It doesn't really change a lot because we are just a human instead of a metal stuff. So it doesn't change a lot for the Wi Fi signal, but it still has some change. But if you want to have significantly change, maybe you can uh, use a pot or wear a metal gloves or something like that to see what happens. And yeah, that's all I have for today. So if you have any question, just feel free, feel free to stay here. And if you have any question related to the uh, data collection, you can share your screen and we can discuss how to solve this kind of problem. And some students may have the trouble on the data collection. For example, they cannot open the monitor mode or they cannot capture any stuff on the monitor mode. Yeah, that's probably because of the hardware. So which means your network interface does not support, support you to collect the data. Then you may need to like switch to another laptop or borrow a laptop from your friend. But if you have no idea how to do it, just let us know as soon as possible. Maybe we can uh, borrow you a computer if you are in Sydney or give you any help if we can. When I ping on Windows 10 with 20, 
per second sleep time. So I'm going to get 15 pancakes per second instead of 50. Oh, that's why. Can you capture all the packets for your pink command? And how about to decrease the interval? I think uh, maybe the t interval is too small because if you ping the ping package is too frequently, some like some router will consider you as an attacker and will not respond to you. So what I suggest is maybe you can, and maybe we can play a video or some stuff to make, make sure you, your packet will not drop by the router. Or you can open a online meeting and share the screen from your computer. Then you, you constantly upload some stuff to the outside. Uh, I didn't say 50 packets. We need to have 50 packets. Maybe you can uh, perform a very good a method or algorithm with on, only like 10 or 20 packets per second. It, it really depends on your model and your algorithm. So I, I'd say the much packets we have, the, the easier we can design the algorithm and the more accuracy we have. can try install Timix on your phone. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Yes, you, you can use any package containing the ISSI, but make sure it's from your computer to outside through the router. Okay. Or just make sure it is from your computer and or to your computer instead of the router to another client under this internet. For example, here. can see because we have already know what is the IP address of my computer. So this packet can be used because the sender is my computer and the receiver is my computer so I can use it. And this one is also the receiver is my computer so I can use it. Uh, let me see if I can find the packet. It's not invalid, it's not valid. I can't find one. Yeah, because there are only one client on this Wi-Fi, so I can use every package that I have here. But maybe you need to apply a filter. You can use ip.dst equal to your IP address. can see every packet is from outside to your computer. And you can also apply a filter like this, ip.source equal to your address. Something like that. So that's all the packets from your computer or to your computer. And you may also need to apply other filters if needed.
Uh, can we do that with DST SRC filtering? Yes, of course. Uh, for the lab, what is mean by neighbor? I now only get one signal, which says minus twenty one. Labor, neighbor. Sorry. Which part? Do you understand? Neighbor, let me find. This one, for both uh, stage as a neighbor. Okay. Let's find this second strong base station signal as a neighbor. So which means they may have two station around your house that you can find it on, figure out on your uh, mobile phone here. Let me show you. In this, can you see that? ISRP zero and ISRP one. So you, you may find two base station around your house that you can rec record it. If you can only find one, it doesn't really matter. In labs, do you need ISRP minus my is in DPN? ISRP is just a scale of DPN, right? Uh, all you need to do is just record this value here. You do not need to do the, any calculation here.
lab seven if we use a android form without google play do you have other apps recommend um, if you are using an android form you then you need to figure out what is the brand the model of your mobile phone for example if you're having a samsung mobile phone then you can search samsung how to uh, get the isrp value Yes, RSRP is in the DBN. But you don't need to do the calculation. And for the Android mobile phone, we are not in, need to install any kind of application. You can run something uh, like, let me search for you. Do you have any, do you have the model of your mobile phone?
Okay, do you have any question here? I will start the recording right now. Uh, feel free to leave here. <laughs>